Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together. Wonderful to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. Well, this is episode 365, which is pretty great. It means we've been at this for a full calendar year. I don't know how many of you have been joining us for, but it's been wonderful to journey through Lamentations and James and First and Second Peter, First, Second, and Third John, through Jude and and through Revelation, and through Matthew, and through Romans, and now we find ourselves in Mark. And it is my prayer that through this time, the Lord has blessed you in your understanding of the Word, and you've been able to see more of Christ. And may the Lord give us many more. May He enable us to get to 1,000. May we finish off the, Old Testament, uh, off the New Testament, and journey our way through the Old Testament too. Well, with no further ado, let's turn to God's word. We're going to be going to Mark chapter 6. But before I read that, let's pray. Lord, you you have blessed us with your word many times in these 365 days. And as we turn to your word again, we pray that you would give us fresh insights into a familiar passage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mark chapter 6, 7 to 13. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there, and if any place will not receive you, they and they will not listen to you, When you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. Yesterday we saw Jesus being rejected in Nazareth and beginning to teach in many villages, probably around the area of Nazareth. And and now we see Jesus sending out his disciples to carry forth the message of the gospel, repent and believe, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And straight out of the gates, this passage is packed with a whole bunch of really wonderful lessons for us. Firstly, recognize that Jesus sends out his disciples, yes, to train them, yes, to prepare them, but also because he can't be everywhere at once. Although God is everywhere, although Jesus, as the second person of the Trinity, is present everywhere, he's omnipresent, yet physically he cannot be everywhere at the same time. His human body is limited, just like your human body is limited. And so he sends forth his disciples to carry forth his message. And we can learn a wonderful message from that. We remember that it's not just the 12 disciples who are sent out, but we're all sent out to share the gospel. And so you and I are sent forth into our workplaces and into our families and into our homes and into our friendship networks in order to take the message of Christ because Jesus can't be physically present with them. However, we don't go forth alone. In the same way that the disciples went with Jesus' blessing, we go with Jesus' blessing, that same blessing that they received at Pentecost. We go forth with the presence of Jesus. You see, we go forth carrying Jesus with us in our hearts by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. But notice specifically the instruction that Jesus gives his disciples. It's very particular. He tells them in verse 8, take no star, uh, sorry, take a staff, take no bread, no bag, no money, and no two tunics. But they are to wear sandals. <laughs> so they, were, they are to wear sandals and a staff in their hand, nothing else. Now, ask yourself the question, why? Well, the sandals is an interesting one. There was a group of Uh, traveling teachers called Stoics at this time, and they would often not wear shoes. It could be a reference to that. But I think it's far more likely that what Jesus is doing is seeking to cause his disciples to trust him and to trust his Father in heaven. You see, we've just seen all of these passages beforehand of Jesus showing his disciples and the world that they need not be afraid, that they can trust him and trust his Father in heaven like he does. 
And so now he sends them forth with that same assurance. They're to go into village and proclaim the good news and to heal people and do stuff. And they're to do it trusting in God to provide. They had to go into the village with nothing but their staff. They don't take money to pay for an inn, but rather they are to go there trusting that God will providentially provide everything they need. I was listening to an audio biographical sketch by Derek Thomas today. I listened to two, so I can't remember which one it was. I think it was Helen Rosevere. And he tells the story of the way that she prays for a hot water bottle for a little child. It might have been Amy Carmichael. Either way, the... The, chi- the, the missionary needs a hot water bottle for a child and a little 10 year old girl prays that God would give a hot water bottle and a dolly so that the child would know, would know that God loves her. And of course, the missionary thinks to themselves, well, it's probably not going to happen. It would have had to have been sent a long time ago, five months ago. And lo and behold, the next day, a package turns up with a hot water bottle and a child's dolly. You see, God providentially orders all things. And maybe you're wondering what's next, and where you're going to go next, and how you're going to serve God next. Well, let me tell you that God will providentially ordain and control all the events to bring you safely to where he wants you to minister. So walk in faith, trusting your Father. But notice also, he doesn't just tell them how to go, he tells them where to go and what to do. They're to go in and enter a house that welcomes them. Verse 10, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So, go and enter a house and seek to stay there. If they are not going to let you stay, shake off the dust. What's Jesus talking about? Well, we are to minister in local settings among local peoples. If people will open the door to us, we are to go in and serve there. We're not to look for better and grander places, but we are to serve faithfully where God places us. But also notice that it matters how people receive kingdom kingdom message carriers. The, the shaking the dust off of the feet was what Jews would do as they symbolize the reality that the nations around them were heathens. And so that action by the disciples was to symbolize the fact that these people were as good as heathens because they would not receive the message of Christ. And in that is a picture, isn't it? We are to serve Christ and proclaim the gospel. But if they will not receive Christ, they will be as the dust of the earth. And and we should be prepared to warn people of that. We should be prepared to point to point people to the danger that is coming so that they might flee to Christ and live. Thirdly, notice that Jesus sends out the twelve with expectation. You see, we remember, don't we, that Jesus has just been rejected. So when Jesus sends them off, he sends them with the same expectation. You see, Christ was rejected. And Jesus is warning them that houses and the places that they go may reject him too. And you might think to yourself, well, what kind of encouragement is that? Well, it's actually a great comfort. Because as gospel carriers, persecution, difficulties, sorrows will come. However, to know that we are not alone, but, but that these things happen to Christ first is of great comfort to us. In fact, it's a great assurance to us that we are standing with Christ. You see, when the disciples were rejected, they could look back to that moment where Jesus was rejected and remember that ultimately they're not rejecting us, but they're rejecting him. And yet notice the great success they had, like Jesus had. They went from village to village, proclaiming the gospel and what happened. They cast out many demons. They proclaimed that people should repent. They anointed and people were healed. They had success because Jesus Christ was with them. Because God the Father enabled them. And we have that same assurance too. Whenever we fulfill the work of God, the work of God will be fulfilled. When we go forth and take the message of Christ, we can have assurance that God will work out his plan. So go forth with strength. But notice very lastly, very briefly, 
that they go forth in twos. Let us not forget that it is not good for man to be alone and it is not good for a disciple to be alone. Many times we have failed because we have expected people to serve by themselves. You know, every man, every woman, every disciple needs a fellow brother or sister to stand by their side, to encourage them, to bear their cross, to bear their burdens, so that iron can sharpen iron and we can all follow Christ faithfully. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We pray that you would bless it to us, give us hearts to believe, help us to be faithful as you fought your followers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining me for another day. I'll see you back here tomorrow.